Hey y'all, here's the first video in Unit 2 Circles and we're going to talk about some basics of circles today and it's mostly going to be some vocabulary but it's important that we get these things down before we move on in the unit. So the first thing we need to talk about is what exactly is a circle. A circle is actually made up of a set of points and all these points are the same distance which we call a radius but they're the same distance away from one specific point, the center of the circle. So if you look down here at the circle I've drawn, we'll call it circle W. W is the name of the center point right here. And we name a circle by its center, so this is circle W. This center point is the same distance from this point on the circle as it is from every other point that's on the circle. And this length, this segment right here, is called a radius. I think that's something you all are familiar with. And we can draw tons and tons of radii around this circle. This is just one of them. There are four special lines and segments that we're going to talk about when dealing with circles. And you'll get really familiar with these lines and line segments. And the first one is a tangent line, and that's a line or a segment or a ray, and it's going to intersect a circle at one and only one point. So if you look at this orange line here, it touches the circle at point A, and then it goes off forever and never touches the circle again. So line AF is a tangent line. Secant lines will go through the circle, so they end up touching the circle at two points. So this blue line, line BD, touches the circle at point B, and it touches it again at point D, and then it goes off forever and ever in both directions. A chord, which is actually part of a secant line, so if we extended this green chord this way and this way, it would be a secant line. So this is just a segment that's part of a secant. It has endpoints that are on the circle and the segment goes inside the circle, that's a chord. And a special kind of chord here in red is a diameter. It goes through the center of the circle, it has endpoints that are on the circle. So again, we could extend this line, and I'll show an example of that. If we extended it in both directions, it would be a secant line. But we're just concerned with this segment that's between the two endpoints, and what makes this special is that it goes through the center. And a chord is actually, or I'm sorry, a diameter, again, is a chord, but a diameter actually is two radii that go in opposite directions. So a diameter is two times the size of the radius. So one theorem that we have in terms of these types of lines and segments is that when we have a tangent line that's tangent to one point on the circle, so it's tangent to this point here, so this blue line touches the circle at one point. If we draw the radius in green, this intersection of the radius and the tangent line is always going to be perpendicular and why that's important is because perpendicular lines make right angles. So this is a 90 degree angle which means that this is also a 90 degree angle and that's going to happen anytime we have a tangent it, when it intersects the radius we're going to have right angles. So if we see a tangent and a radius we know that a right angle is being formed. When we talk about circles, we're also going to talk about arcs, which are just portions of the curve of the circle. So if we take just a chunk of this circle, it's called an arc. Half of the circle is a semicircle. So if I'm tracing the arc right here, that is a semicircle. It's 180 degrees. An entire circle is 360 degrees. So half is 180, and it's formed by this diameter. So if I draw any diameter in a circle, it's going to cut that circle in half into two semicircles. 
A minor arc is an arc that's bigger than zero, but it's smaller than 180, so it's smaller than a semicircle. So this piece of this circle right here, that's a minor arc. It's bigger than nothing, and it's smaller than half the circle. And the major arc is bigger than a semicircle, but smaller than the whole thing. So this one I'm tracing in green. That is a major arc. I think it makes sense that the big one is major and the small one is minor. So just like we have in the past with angles and lines and segments and rays and planes, we have ways to name arcs so that we can communicate with each other about what arcs we're talking about. So if we want to label a minor arc, oops, pardon me. If we want to label a minor arc, we need to choose two letters where the arc is between. So the minor arc in this picture is between A and B. So we'll name it arc AB, and we do that, we finish that by putting an arc symbol over top. So it kind of makes sense, just like we put a line symbol over a line, a ray symbol over a ray, we put this arc over top of the letters that we're talking about the arc. To name the major arc, We're going to be to be a little more specific. It's between A and B, but in order to differentiate between this minor arc and the major arc, we will call it ACB. Or we could call it BCA. So that letter C, which is between A and B, gives us a direction. It tells us we're talking about the arc that starts at A, goes towards C, and keeps going until we get to B. And again, we put the arc symbol over top. So pause the video right now, and I want you to name the arc formed by angle MBN. And I also want you to name the major arc in the circle. So the arc formed by angle MBN here in blue is the minor arc. Oops, that's purple. I want it to be blue. Arc MN. And the major arc is the one that's bigger than a semicircle. We could call it NLN or MLN. And that's the big arc. I want you to try these four questions dealing with arcs, tangents, secants, and chords. Make sure you put your answers in online. Submit them online using the link in the description section of this video. Good luck.